God, we believe that you have chosen Donald Trump as an instrument in your hands for this purpose. However, our enemies are trying to steal, kill, and destroy our America. So we need you to intervene. Your word says that you hate dishonest scales. So Father, we are asking you for election integrity. And we are asking that you would put a stop to the unjust, unfair attacks on President Trump through our courts. God, would you raise up godly judges that would restore integrity to our judicial system. Now we seek you for the protection for President Trump and his family and his team. And God, we ask that you would continue to have his ha your hand upon him. It's Ken Harbaugh with Against All Enemies on the Midas Touch Network. One of the things about America's political culture that I struggle hardest to understand is how evangelical Christian churches have so thoroughly embraced Trumpism. 84% of white evangelical voters chose Trump in the last election. But the MAGA movement with its paranoia and xenophobia and racism is antithetical to everything the historical Jesus taught about love and tolerance and welcoming the stranger in our midst. And yet, right now, there are right-wing pastors across the country who choose the sword over the cross, who flirt with the idea of a righteous civil war. Here is prominent evangelical leader Andrew Womack saying that a civil war would be worth it to turn our country back to God. And I've actually had people say, say that if Trump was to be elected, if we got a conservative Congress, that they fear that we would have another uh, civil war. And you know what? I don't want a civil war. I don't know anybody that does. But would it be worth it to turn this nation back? I believe it would. I want viewers of this show to understand what we're up against. The MAGA movement, Trumpism, is not a typical political movement. It is fanatical. It is a cult. Mike Johnson, the leading Republican in the House and second in line for the presidency, has referred to himself as America's Moses, chosen by God to lead us out of the wilderness. There is a collection of militia groups right now calling itself the Army of God, deploying members to the border. That's not going to end well. And by the way, the direct translation of the Arabic name of the terrorist organization Hezbollah is Army of God. We know where that kind of religious extremism leads. I wanted to talk to someone who understands militant Christian nationalism and how it has overtaken the American evangelical movement. And there is no one who gets what is happening better than Tim Alberta, because he's been there, not just as a journalist at The Atlantic and a best-selling author, but as the son of a deeply conservative pastor, as a committed Christian himself, and as someone who actually understands what the historical Jesus was trying to say. The crux of Tim's argument is brilliant. The supposed defenders of God, who are now in the thrall of Donald Trump, are really motivated by fear, which comes out as hatred, paranoia, a desire for revenge. Tim brilliantly dismantles their worldview. My full interview with him is coming out soon on Burn the Boats. I'm sharing a brief highlight here. But first, I'm going to reshare this video reposted by Donald Trump. This is exactly what a cult leader does. And on June 14, 1946, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God gave us Trump. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, fix this country, work all day, fight the Marxists, eat supper, then go to the Oval Office and stay past midnight at a meeting of the heads of state. So God made Trump. I need somebody with arms, strong enough to rustle the deep state, and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to ruffle the feathers, tame cantankerous World Economic Forum, come home hungry, have to wait until the first lady is done with lunch with friends, then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon, and mean it. So God gave us Trump. I need somebody who can shape an axe, but wield a sword. 
who had the courage to step foot in North Korea, who can make money from the tar of the sand, turn liquid to gold, who understands the difference between tariffs and inflation, will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon, but then put in another 72 hours. So God made Trump. God had to have somebody willing to go into the den of vipers, call out the fake news for their tongues as sharp as a serpent's. The poison of vipers is on their lips, and yet stop. So God made Trump. God said, I need somebody who will be strong and courageous, who will not be afraid or terrified of the wolves when they attack. A man who cares for the flock, a shepherd to mankind who won't ever leave nor forsake them. I need the most diligent worker to follow the path and remain strong in faith and know the belief of God and country. Somebody who's willing to drill, bring back manufacturing and American jobs, farm the lands, secure our borders, build our military, fight the system all day, and finish a hard week's work by attending church on Sunday. And then his oldest son turns and says, Dad, let's make America great again. Dad, let's build back a country to be the envy of the world again. So God made Trump. If you believe that Jesus is who he says he is, and if you take seriously the command to fear not, and if, and if you believe that he overcame the world so that we might have life everlasting in a kingdom that is not of this world, then you cannot allow that fear and grievance and like, oh, the walls are closing in, they're coming to get us. You cannot allow that to create a permission structure to hate and to, and, and to wage war and to uh, demonize. It's just there's no biblical justification for it whatsoever. It's that command to fear not that I think really puts the lie to to these these churches that celebrate the militancy and that invite people to bring weapons into the church. This whole idea that God needs defending like that, I mean, <laughs> if it weren't so terrifying, I would find laughable. When Donald Trump says that Joe Biden and the Democrats are going to hurt God. I mean, what what kind of God are are they imagining that uh, that is that fragile? Yeah, how small is your theology, right? To to say like, and this is where I fear that we may be through the looking glass a little bit because I remember when Trump said that in in the twenty twenty election. I remember tweeting about it. And looking around, waiting for people to say, okay, all right, hold on a second. Like, you know, I've supported this guy and I might even vote for him again, but like, this is nutty. Like he's getting, Joe Biden's going to hurt God. Really? So I don't get it. Is he, is he a senile old fool or is he so powerful that he's going to hurt God? Like, which is it? You know, uh, for one thing, that's just doesn't make any sense. But then, you know, you see this video circulating a couple of weeks ago with the narrator basically saying that, like, God needs Trump to, to protect, to protect humanity. What is, I think it's, I think the voiceover says at one point that he describes Trump as a shepherd to all of mankind who will <laughs> never leave nor forsake them. And obviously it's, obviously it's, it's blasphemous and it's heresy. But it's also just pathetic. Like what? Like who? Like, it, but the amazing thing though is that Trump's playing this at his rally, and you see all these heads nodding. Like people are fired up about it, right? Like, and it's just sad. Like how 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 small is your theology that you need the guy from The Apprentice and from Home Alone Two to protect you? It's just like it, it's 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 sad. Hi, everyone. I want to give a big shout out to all those who have signed up to support this show through my Patreon page. We are off to a fantastic start. Thank you for making it possible. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider it. In the coming months, I'll be posting early and exclusive content, 
including a trailer for the Against All Enemies documentary film, which has been racking up awards at film festivals around the world and will soon be released here in the U.S. Stand by for more details on that. And if you're a subscriber to my Patreon page, be on the lookout for an early preview. Thanks again, everyone. This episode of Burn the Boats is brought to you by Manukora Honey. This miracle of nature just fell into my lap at the perfect time. It's a rare super honey that is 100% natural and has some unique properties. Manukora makes Manuka honey, a single origin honey that comes from New Zealand where the bees only feed on the nectar of the Manuka tea tree, making honey that is pure, rich, complex, with a creamier texture that is on a completely different level from the normal honey you find at the supermarket. You can use it as you would any other honey, but what puts the super in Manuka honey is it's rich in oxidants and prebiotics, three times more compared to regular honey. On top of that, it contains an antibacterial compound called MGO that can be found exclusively in Manuka honey. The bottom line is that these nutrients support your optimal immune and digestive health, and it's delicious. Manukora sent me a jar and squeeze bottle of their MGO 850 Plus Manuka Honey, their best-selling honey. The 850 Plus Honey has a creamy caramel texture that is unlike anything I've ever tried. Just grab a spoonful out of the jar and I put it in my favorite beverage or I squeeze some out on toast or oatmeal. It's delicious. Manukora is savory, delicious, and truly the best honey I've had. If you head to manukora.com slash boats, you can get $25 off their starter kit, which comes with the MGO 850 Plus Manuka Honey, a free travel pack of honey sticks, a free wooden spoon, and also a free guidebook. It's the perfect gift for a loved one no matter the season. I love the jar and squeeze bottle, but the extra pack of compostable honey sticks is perfect for whenever you're on the go. You can bring them with you when you're traveling or need a quick snack running errands, and they are the perfect energy boost if you're out for a run or at the gym, especially this time of year. That's M-A-N-U-K-O-R-A dot com slash boats to get $25 off your starter kit. This is just the ultimate honey. Indulge and try some honey with superpowers from Manukora. We haven't talked yet about the eschatological fetish, this idea that Armageddon is upon us and we need to prepare. And there is just such zeal and anticipation uh, and glee around the idea of a violent (laughs) end to the world. There is, uh, you know, Ken, this is the thing that people didn't appreciate during COVID. and, And I talked about it then. Um, and then obviously wrote a lot more about it in, in this book. But if you have been steeped in this, in this language, this, this, uh, this messaging for decades that the end is coming, that there is going to be one day this, this clash, this cosmic clash between the forces of good and evil in this country and that you'd better be prepared for it because they're going to come for you. They're going to come for you. They're going to come for your church. They're going to close down your church. You're not going to be able to worship anymore. They're going to try to abolish Christianity from public life. If, if you've been marinating in that kind of a message, well, suddenly COVID-19 arrives and your governor comes out and says that, you know, you can't go to church on Sunday. And you think to yourself, well, this is it. They told us, right? They, they warned us that this day was coming. And now the prophecy has been fulfilled, right? And so what do you do about it? Are you going to cower? Are you going to be a collaborator with the regime? Are you going to, are, are you going to, uh, deny Christ like Peter did and live in fear? Or are you going to stand up and be a lion? Are you going to stand up and fight and show that you can put faith over fear and that you're going to, you're going to fight to protect the church and to protect Christianity and to advance God's kingdom here on earth. Like that was the, that was the sort of dumbed down lowest common denominator binary that, that, that infected a lot of evangelical thinking in this country. And, um, and I, but again, I think it was predicated on that sort of prophesying of, of, of end times theology, which was of course so big in the, in the seventies and the eighties. And, but, but still, persisted, uh, you know, well beyond that. And so there is a, 
as you said, it's not just like an expectation, but a kind of a gleeful anticipation of like, well, if you want it, come and get it. Like, you know, if uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have to pry me, uh, you'll, you'll have to pull me out of my church, uh, over my dead body. And, and again, it's, uh, it's a, it's a misplaced fear rooted in a lot of bad theology where yet again if you were to if you were to study not just the teachings of Christ across the gospels but even just study the 24 hour period in which Christ is arrested is tried and is crucified and study his responses study his behaviors Contrast them with the behaviors of those around him. There is a very clear blueprint here. I've used the word unambiguous a few times in this conversation, Ken, but it is, I mean, that's, it is unambiguous. Like if, if you are in fact a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have a blueprint for how you are supposed to respond to these things. Um, and even if you believe that the end is near, if you b- truly believe that this is it, then you should be trying to save as many souls as possible. You should be, you should be, uh, you know, to the extent that you're gleeful, it's that you're going to go home and be with Jesus. It, it's not grab my AR-15 and let's take out as many of the, the, the evil secular Democrats as possible, right? Like that's, again, but so much of this is just warped through the American lens. It becomes hard to, I think, to divorce where the, the bad history and the overrealized violent nationalism ends and where the bad theology begins. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.